Welcome to this care collab on Neostylus Lusneri. It's so good to have you here. We have several channels participating on this one, so feel free to go to the description and check out the links and see what their Neostylus Lusneris are up to this time of year. I am here in southern Spain, and my Neostylus that we're looking at right now is the regular form right here, the classic form. And then here is the infamous funky new stylus loose neary blue funky because a lot of videos have been made about this one seeing as it's behaving somewhat erratic at some points so i have come to the conclusion i have a genetically deformed one right there needless to say this care collab is a great example of what our orchids do while we are in different hemispheres when we post on the same day because we grow the same orchid different environments different climates and yes, different hemispheres. And I know that Orchids and Finbos has Neostylus in bloom because he's in South Africa. So I am so glad that we have a care collab where we can see the different behaviors based on the seasons, but yet we're posting on the same day and we have a Neostylus in bloom. Love it. Anyway, get my geek moment out of the way. My two Neostylus lucineris during the winter months reside on the west side of my patio because as you can see, there's a lot of light when the sun shines. I also have reflecting walls, but more importantly, because of the Rhynchostylus parent, there is a pocket of warmth here that isn't so evident if I were to go to the south side or the east side. It's a rather narrow little space here on the west side and the terracotta heats up nicely, the reflecting wall heats up beautifully, so I usually have a few more degrees here than I would anywhere else. And on a beautiful sunny day, they get full direct winter sun. I would not dare do this to them come the warmer temperatures and I include early spring. Today we're having 19 degrees Celsius, but here on the west side of my patio, I am at 24 degrees Celsius. And yet the sun is still not burning on them because the breeze is still the breeze that is cooler, that is coming from the shade, keeping the leaves cooler. I am not concerned about them burning at this point in time. If, for example, the temperatures in my little patio here were to rise to 26, 28 degrees Celsius, they would go under the south facing covered portico just to protect them a little bit because they have not had as much light as I would like to have had them had. The last two weeks have been diabolical to say the least to the point that even my west little corner here isn't warm enough to bring them outside so the watering the last three weeks has been extremely conservative a lot of plain RO water that I spray and mainly focus on the bottom half of the basket trying not to get anything into the crown because even though they have some reserves in the velamen. As they are growing in size and they're growing well in size, their water requirements also rise. So far, so good. I am not incurring any kind of rot. On my Neostylus funky here, <laughs> I have had some weird things happening and that is because abnormal genetics, I think, are causing a new growth to come out a little bit weird. I have dealt with that. The rest of the growth are looking to be progressing as normal. I have now got two fans to take care of on my classic Neo Stylus. There's one in the back right there as well. So you see, conservative watering is all very, very good, but always in balance with the needs and the growing potential now of these orchids. Possibly in another two weeks, the temperatures will have risen another five, six degrees. And by that time, they will not be exposed to direct sun unless there's a good breeze going. And then I can approach them with a little bit more aggressive spraying. I won't have to be so careful and I can start to fertilize as well. When I say start to fertilize, now I have been ticking them over with a little bit of fertilizer, maybe 50 parts per million, oh, every two weeks, maybe. But I did stop fertilizing the past three weeks just because I didn't want them to be getting any kind of nutrition that would suddenly make them bolt in their growths. And also while they were inside, I want to avoid the confusion. For them, the daylights are getting longer. Now they're getting nutrition, but they don't have the light to match. So 
Segway, speaking of day length, look at my loose Neary blue. This is a top piece that I chopped off from the other piece that you see in the basket. And this one is here in Lekka and self watering because early days I thought maybe the setup wasn't providing enough water for the orchid. So I decided to take the top piece off and also inspect to see if maybe Fusarium was causing my loose Neary blue to be funky. Lekka and self watering is growing really well, but the day lengths have gone longer. Proof is in the pudding because my little section here by the hedge is in sun at 5.30 p.m., which is amazing. Normally this part just has full shade, but here we are. This is fabulous. I'm so happy. The sun is rising in the sky. But anyway, this one here, for example, I have been also very, very conservative on the fertilizer because of the fact that, you know, light levels were much lower and I didn't want the growth to start to bolt. But here we are doing really, really well and also bloomed for me at the same time as the mother plant in the basket bloomed. The two fans are progressing really, really well. Yep, so let's go back to the originals. The airflow over here is very adequate at this point in time. And I make a point that when I water them and use the sprayer that I do have airflow. Otherwise, I do lower them into a tub of water just to give the bottom half of the baskets access to some water. I am so glad that soon the weeks of apprehension are going to be a thing of the past. There are clear signs of the orchid is wanting to grow both of them. And it is going to be so much fun not to have to worry anymore with regards to possible rot. Now you can see how I've hung these. That's not random, that's on purpose. The loose Neary Blue can take a lot more light than the classic Neo Stylus loose Neary. The leaves are extremely tough. They are very, very fleshy. Comparison to the loose Neary, the classic one, that have a little bit more of a Vanda texture to them. This one is just so, so hard. So this one can take a lot more light and acts like a barrier of protection to the loose Neary down here. And this is how I hang them up every day when I can bring them outside, just so that the loose Neary gets plenty of light, but the leaves don't burn. And let me show you just one more thing that is very evident here. This is cold damage from the winter of 2020 to 2021, where I wasn't very, very careful with the temperatures because I thought the Neophoenicia being the parent can tolerate more cold. I was taught a lesson. So here the chlorophyll has declined and died off, leaving me with a scar tissue that shows up as anthocyanin. The leaves that have been developing throughout the winter of 2021-2022 are fine, except that it's a little bit pinched here. And that is the start of the winter where I started to really back off on the watering, but there is no cold damage. So at least I got that balance right. I've been a lot more careful with when I bring these orchids inside now, having learned my lesson as to their tolerance or lack thereof, simply because we have a new Phoenicia as a parent. Anyway, these are my two. They're getting ready to really gear up and start proper active growth instead of sneakily starting to respond to the longer days. But I can assure you, if you want to see blooms, the Southern Hemisphere, South Africa has blooms and I cannot wait to go and check out that video because one is impatient. <laughs> my Neo Stylus probably won't bloom until maybe June, if nothing goes wrong. The loose Neary Blue has already bloomed, surprisingly. It was very early, but nothing should surprise me about my funky Neo Stylus anymore. It does what it does. It's my little ugly duckling in my collection. <laughs> so yeah, if you're interested, check out the description. The links of the videos of the participating channels are there. Meanwhile, I thank you so very, very much for coming over and seeing my video from a beautiful, sunny Southern Spain day. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. I would love to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye.